ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد يا عباد الله يا عباد الله don't forget the quran after the month of the quran the allama al hafiz hafiz al hakimi rahmatullah alayhi he has some beautiful lines of poetry that are linked to the quran he begins these tremendous lines by saying wa bit tadabbur wa tartil fatlu kita بالله لا سيما في في حندص الظلم he says and reflect and ponder contemplate what tartil and recite and tartil with a slow recitation a recitation that is one of reflection what's no kita بالله لا سيما في حندس الظلم and recite the book of Allah especially in the extreme darkness of the night the great sheikh sheikh abdul razak bin sheikh abdul muhsan hafizahum allah ta'ala he mentioned al jar wal majrur fi qawlihi wa bi tadabbur wa tartil متعلق بقوله فتل كتاب الله that this grammatical construction as he begins with وبالتدبر والترتيل and with contemplation and a recitation that is suitable for contemplation and that is connected to a statement so re- and recite the book of Allah thus recite the book of Allah what we understand from this grammatical construction is that it is as if the sheikh he is saying and what he is implying by this is it's no kitab allah but tadabbur wa tartil recite the book of allah with contemplation reflection and with the recitation that is suitable for reflection and contemplation wallah jalla wa ala and allah jalla wa ala amara bi tadabbur allah has commanded us to reflect to reflect over his book bi tadabbur kitabihi fi mawadi' kathira min al-Qur'an in many places inside of the Qur'an from them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement afala yatadabbarun al-Qur'an am ala qulubin aqfaluha do they not reflect and ponder over the Qur'an or is there a, a lack on their heart or is there a lack upon the heart we understand from this ya ibad that not reflecting over the quran and not contemplating over the quran then this is signs and indications that there is a lack upon the heart whereas reflecting over the quran 
contemplating over the Qur'an, then this is a sign that there is no lock upon the heart. That there is no lock upon the heart. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who their heart it is open to the khair. That their heart it is open to the good. That their heart is not closed down from the good, but it is open to the good. Open to guidance. Allahumma ameen. Wa qala Allah ta'ala, Allah ta'ala he says, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun. A book in which we have sent it down unto you, O Muhammad, a blessed book. So that you shall reflect. So that you may contemplate. Contemplate and reflect over what? Ayati. So that you may contemplate and reflect over the verses, over the signs, the ayat that are contained therein. And so that those men of understanding will gain a reminder, will gain some type of admonition. So that those who have intellect, so that those who utilize their brains, so those who have a sound intellect, then they would gain reflection and they will reflect. وَهَذِهِ الْآيَاتِ فِيهَا حَثُّ عَلَى تَدَبُّرُ These ayat, they are an encouragement for us to reflect. تَدَبُّرْ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ To reflect over the book of Allah. To reflect over the book of Allah عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَتَدَبُّرْ تَكُونُ بِي بِتَأَمَّلْ or ta'amun, and reflecting, then this will be by paying attention, thinking about, contemplating over, lima'ani, the meanings, which stresses the importance of learning the meanings, stresses the importance of learning the meanings of the Qur'an, stresses the importance of learning those sciences that will help us and aid us into understanding the meanings of the Qur'an. Those sciences like the sciences of the Arabic language. So that we may have an understanding of the Qur'an. So we may have some type of understanding the science of the Arabic language and it will help us because it will give us access and it will open up for us bithnilahi ta'ala the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As the language of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that it was Arabic. And the Prophet ﷺ and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, it explains the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ, he explains the Quran. A Sunnah to fasil al Quran. The Sunnah it explains the Quran. So the Arabic language it will be a miftah. It will be a key by way in which it will open up for us the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which explains the Quran. So therefore we can reflect over the meanings of the Quran. What tafakkur fi dalalat wal aql. Maradillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to think over those things in which the Quran it points to. Over those things in which the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it points us to. It directs us to. That we reflect over these things. We contemplate over these things. And that we have understanding. We have a sound intellect over that which is intended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But all of this comes by us reflecting over the meanings of the Quran. The reason for reflecting over the meaning of the Quran, ya ibad, is so that we may implement the Qur'an. So that our lives may be affected by the Qur'an. The more we have understanding of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this will be an encouragement for us to carry out these commands. The more we have understanding of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this will be an understanding for us as to how to carry out these commands. The more we have understanding and reflection, the more you will see our lives will change. And the changing of that is by reflecting over the meanings and not by a pure recitation. And this is why the imam, or could be said, this is from the wisdom why the Imam Rahmatullah alayhi he begins by saying what tadabbur and reflecting over the Quran and then he says what tartil and to recite what tartil this is a qira'ah this is a recitation that has in it slowness, a recitation that has in it ease, a recitation that you can clearly understand what is being recited. Not a recitation that is fast, because a recitation that is fast, as the ulama they mentioned, why are you reciting in such a fast manner? It's as if you're trying to get rid of the ayah. It's as if you're trying to be done with it and be finished with it. Why are you rushing past it? What are you in a hurry for? What are you trying to finish and get to? So it is incumbent that we recite the Qur'an in a manner that allows us to reflect, a manner that allows us to recite its huruf properly, a manner that allows us to implement the tajweed properly. أَخْذُ بِالتَّجْوِيدِ حَتْمُ لَازِمُ 
ومن لا يجود القران اثم لانه من الاله انزل وهكذا منه الينا وصل كما قال امام ابن جزري رحمه الله عليه as he mentions taking to the tajweed implementing the tajweed this is an affair that is lazim this is a fear that is a must and whoever does not implement the tawheed or whoever does not implement the tajweed whoever does not recite the quran correctly where he has the ability to do so then he is an athim he is a sinner he is a sinner for not reciting it correctly and he has the ability to recite it correctly he knows how to recite it correctly and then he explains why he said لِأَنَّهُ مِنَ الْإِلَهِ أَنزَلَ وَهَكَذَا مِنْهُ إِلَيْنَا وَصَلَ he said because like this the Quran it came down from Allah it came down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the tajweed and like this with the tajweed it has reached us so we have to have a concern to recite the book of Allah correctly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us about the believing slaves those who believe in Allah's book as Allah ta'ala he says alladhina atainahumul kitab yatlunahu haqqa tilawati and that those whom we have given the book they recite it as it should be recited they recite it correctly ulaika yu'minuna bih these are the ones that they truly believe in it these are the ones who they truly believe in it. So from that is to recite the Qur'an correctly. But also from that, because the Qur'an is not just Mujarrad al-Qira'a, it's not just that we recite it and that's it, but that we follow it. That we follow it. And that also was understood from this ayah. الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابِ يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِ Those who we have given the book and they recite it as it should be recited. Because tilawa. In the Arabic language, it also comes bearing the meaning of to follow, to follow. Allah Ta'ala, He says, and by the sun, and by the radiance of the sun, the light of the sun. And by the moon, when the moon, talaha. What does tilawa here mean for the moon? It means when the moon follows the sun. When the moon follows the sun. So those who... يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ These are those يَتْتَبِعُونَهُ حَقَّ تِبَعِهِ These are those who follow it as it should be followed. Not just they recite it as it should be recited, but those who follow it as it should be followed. Because when we recite with reflection and thinking and contemplation, this will have an effect on our actions, then therefore we will be able to follow the Qur'an as we should follow it and implement the Qur'an. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he encouraged us in many places to be of those who recite the Quran and to not be from those who are away from the Quran, but to constantly recite it. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentions, "Mathal al-Mu'min, al-ladhi yaqra al-Quran, the similitude of the believer that he recites the Quran." Mathal utrujja. It is like the example of a citron, which is a citrus type of foliage. Now, this type of foliage, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentions to us, Rihuha طَيِّب Its smell is good. It smells good. Citrusy smell, it smells good. وَطَعْمُهَا طَيِّب And its taste is good. So this type of foliage, its smell is good and its taste is good. Naam. And this is the example of the believer who recites the Quran. This is the example of the believer who recites the Quran. You will find from him goodness upon goodness, goodness that has within it goodness. Naam. Wa qawluhu alayhi salatu wa salam. And the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Sahaba, to the Sahaba, showing us the superiority of the Quran, showing us the superiority of working for the for the hereafter, and that we should never let it, never allow it to be that which is hold back or is 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 hindered by the dunya. We should never let our striving for the hereafter be hindered by our busyness with the dunya. Because our striving for the hereafter is better than what the dunya contains. Is better than what the dunya contains. Many examples of this can be found inside of the Kitab and the Sunnah. From them is a statement of the Prophet ﷺ about the two raka'at of Sunnah before Fajr. Those raka'at that were light. Those raka'at in which the Prophet ﷺ, he recited in the first raka'at, Surah Al-Kafirun. 
those raka'ahs in which the Prophet ﷺ, he recited in the second raka'ah, Surah Ikhlas, two small chapters. The Prophet ﷺ, he would pray them very lightly. But with that, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Raka'at say, Fajr, khayru min dunya wa ma fiha, aw kama qali nabi ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that the two units of sunnah prayers before Fajr is better than the whole dunya and that which is contained therein. Likewise, we see another example from this. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ayyukum, yuhibbu an yaghduwa kulla yawmin ila buthan, aw ila عقيق العقيق ويأتي منه بناقتين كوماوين. He says, how many of you loves that every day he will go out to بطحان or he will go out to عقيق and he will come back with two camels that have fat humps. He will come back with two big camels that have fat humps. في غير إثمن Without any sin or crime. وَلَا قَتِلْ رَحِمْ And without any severing of the family ties. He won't do nothing crooked that will cause a crime or will cause shame to his family and result in the cutting off of the family ties. قَالُوا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ نُحِبُّ ذَلِكْ They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we all love that. We all would like that. قَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, أَفَلَا يَغْضُ أَحَدُكُمْ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ فَيَعْلَمُ أَوْ يَقْرَأْ آيَتَيْنِ مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ خَيْرٌ لَهُ مِنْ نَاقَتَيْنِ وَثَلَاثٌ خَيْرٌ لَهُ مِنْ ثَلَاثٍ وَأَرْبَعٌ خَيْرٌ لَهُ مِنْ أَرْبَعٍ وَمِنْ أَعْدَادِهِنْ مِنَ الْإِبِلِ He said that whoever goes out to the masjid, whoever goes to the masjid, and he reads two, or he learns, he memorizes, he learns two verses, or he reads two verses from, from the book of Allah. It is better for him than two camels. And three is better for him than three. And four is better for him than four. And whatever it may be from the number of the camels. So however many ayat is recited, then that is better for you than you came back with a camel with extremely fat humps on his back. Hadith Rawahu Muslim min Hadith Uqba bin Amir. The Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned... Because we have to be of those who work together upon good. Those who come together and we aid each other upon good. Ta'awanu al birri wa taqwa. Allah Ta'ali says, and help and cooperate, help one another upon al birr, upon righteousness and upon piety, taqwa. So we should be helping one another to learn the Quran, memorize the Quran. Understand the meanings of the Qur'an. Reading through the tafsir of the Qur'an, the tafsir of the Qur'an from the Salaf, the likes of Tafsir ibn Kathir. Reading from the tafsir of the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah, the likes of the tafsir, tafsir Imam Sa'di. So we have some understanding of the meanings that are contained therein, that we come together and we gather and we have this be the subject of our conversations, not who won this game or who do you think will win that race or who do you think will do this or who do you think will get that or the likes of what is spoken about and the like of that has no benefit for us at the very least and maybe from speech that actually harms us. وَعِيَاذُ billah. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ that never have a people gathered in a house from the houses of Allah. Which shows you that the masdar, which shows you that the origin for education is the masjid. Is the masjid. Never has a people come together in a house from the houses of Allah. Yatluna kitab Allah. And they recite the book of Allah. وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ And they recite it. And they and they and they study it. They study it amongst themselves. They they recite the book of Allah and they study it amongst themselves. I want you to listen to what happens to these individuals because I know all of us is stressed by some aspect of the dunya or another aspect of the dunya, whether that be an aspect at work or whether that be an aspect, an aspect, an aspect from whatever the worldly matter may be. Something out there got a stress. Something out there didn't put a gray hair somewhere. Naam. So from the benefits of coming together in the, in the house of Allah Azza wa Jal, reciting the Qur'an, studying the Qur'an amongst ourselves, studying the Qur'an with each other, is that what? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهُمُ السَّكِينَةِ Except that tranquility will descend upon them. Tranquility. 
Which one of us don't need that tranquility? Which one of us don't need that break from the monotony of this world? Which one of us don't need that peace and that relaxation that comes from studying of the Qur'an and reciting of the Qur'an? And Ibad, we should know that as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions, every time a person doesn't take his prescribed medicine and he, and he turns to something alternative, then the love in his heart for the prescribed medicine will diminish. And the love in his heart for that which is not legislated will increase. So whenever a person gets sad, then he shouldn't run to that record. He shouldn't run to that MP3 or that album of slow singer, jam, whatever, to help him get through it. He shouldn't run to no poetry, some haram poetry and a she to help him get through it. Why? Because by him turning to that, it will diminish the love for the real medicine from his heart. So much so that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said what means, so much so that you will find a person will begin to develop a disdain and a hatred for the Qur'an. This is as a result of what? Him turning his back on the Qur'an and going to the likes of this music and the like. So when you have problems, you'll find your peace where? In the Qur'an. Listening to it. Reciting it. Learning it. Studying it in the Qur'an. Also what comes upon them? الرحمة, and that mercy envelops them. Mercy surrounds them. Mercy is all around them. Which one of us doesn't need that? And the angels, they come around. The angels, they encircle them. And this is the greatest of them all. This is the greatest of them all. If this was the only benefit, it's enough. And Allah mentions them to those who are with Him. Allah mentions those servants. Allah mentions those Muslims. Allah mentions those believers who are studying the book of Allah. Allah mentions them to the angels. If that was the only benefit in reciting the Qur'an and studying the Qur'an amongst ourselves inside of the masajid, that will be enough that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions us to the malaika. Hadith Rawahu Muslim in Hadith Abi Huraira. Also, Ya Ibad, how many of us make a lot of sins? How many of us need good deeds? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Man qara'a harfan min kitab Allah, whoever recites one harf from the book of Allah, falahu hasana, he will have a good deed. Wal hasana bi ashri amthaliha, and the good deed is multiplied by tenfold. One good deed comes tenfold. Wa qala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لا أقول ألف لام ميم حرف. He said, I don't say that ألف لام ميم is a حرف. لكن ألف حرف ولام حرف وميم حرف. So when ألف لام ميم, three حسنات. Every حسنات multiplied very minimum by ten. So when ألف لام ميم, thirty حسنات. And the حسنات they are multiplied up until. Up until 700 times. Which one of us could deny ourselves from that? Which one of us don't need the likes of that? Hadith on Sahih Rawahu wa Tirmidhi. Ya Ibadullah, we have to strive to be from the people of the Quran. Those who recite the Quran, who study the Quran, who act in accordance with the Quran, who reflect and ponder over the Quran. So therefore, we should have a time in our day that we do it. We should have a time designated inside of our day that we do it. And I know we all can do it. Naam. I know we all can do it. And you'll see why. And Hafid al-Hakimi, Rahmatullah alayhi, he finishes off this bait of poetry. And he says, I see ma fi hindas al He said, especially in the darkness of the light, of the night. And this is the time that it is, when the, when the night is really dark. When the night is really dark. Imam al-Nawawi, rahmatullah alayhi, he mentions, he says that, Afdal al-Waqt, the best time to recite the Qur'an, wa anna al-Afdal al-Qira'a, the best recitation of the Qur'an, ma kana fi salat is that which is recited in the prayer. The best recitation of the Qur'an is that which is recited inside of the prayer itself. Wa amma al-Qira'a fi ghayr al-Salat, and the recitation in other than the Salat, Outside the salat, فأفضلها قراءة الليل. Then the best of it is the reciting at night time. 
to recite the Qur'an at night when the busyness of the day is done, when the business of the day is over, when the distractions of the day have come to an end, have come to a rest. Whatever work has to be done is done. Whatever cooking has to be done is done. Whatever homework you have to help with is done. So on and so. Whatever homework you may have to do is done. وَنِصْفُ الْأَخِيرِ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ أَفْضَلْ مِنِصْفُ الْأَوَّلِ And the last part of the night, the last half of the night is better than the first part of the night. And I mentioned, I know this is something that we all can do. I know all of us could set a time and the last set a time at the last part of the night to to what to recite from the Quran. How do I know we can do it? How do I know we can do it? Because the majority of us was doing it for the majority of not all of Ramadan. Didn't you not get up in the last part of the night to eat suhoor? Didn't you get up in the last part of the night to get that meal in before you started fasting? Naam, we know we was doing it, the alarm was set, we was up, we was eating. So we can get up and eat and fill our bellies and let us get up and nourish our soul by reading the Qur'an, studying the Qur'an, reflecting on the Qur'an, memorizing from the Qur'an and let us encourage each other to do it. Let us encourage each other to do it and you do that which is easiest for you. You recite in Qiyamul Layl that which is easy for you, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says, uh, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He mentions, وَقْرَأُ مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ and recite that which is easy for you to recite from the Quran. So let us be of those who take these beautiful lessons, who take this beautiful experience. And acclamation and that which we have acclimated ourselves doing over Ramadan and let it continue beyond Ramadan from making a portion of our night for the salah by getting up before the fajr by an hour or in half an hour and recite from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, memorize from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, even if you make it 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day over a long stretch will be a lot because al qadil bistimrar khayrun min al kathir yanqati' because a little bit that is continuous is better than a lot that is severed. Yeah, Ibad, this is the reminder I wanted to give to myself first and foremost, and I hope that you all too can benefit from it. Hada Aqulu Kali Hada wa Stafullah Li Walakum Subhanakum wa Bahamdik Ashadu Allah ilaha la at Istafuka Watu ilaik wa Jazakum Allahu Khaira.